Hey everyone, so I wasn't even planning on doing a video um, on this, but I was working on this and uh, found out something very interesting. So what I have here is a uh, Lenovo Think Center M92P, and it's the tiny model. And, and these were never really meant for anything, you know, any kind of heavy computing. Now, what I recently did was upgraded the CPU. It originally had an i5 uh, 3470T, and I upgraded it to a 3550. Now, one thing you'll notice is just at idle, it's idling between 50 and 60 degrees. And that's not too happy, or it's not too good. The second you do anything on it that requires any kind of CPU usage, it just spikes and it goes up 70, 80 degrees. So, and I've seen a lot of people on forums complain about these and they say, you know, you just really can't put bigger CPUs in them because the thermals just can't handle it. Well, let's turn this off. Let me show you what I found. So I was messing around and I originally thought maybe I could put a shim in there, a copper shim. The thing is this one's a little bit too thick, but let's unplug this. When I took the, now I reapplied thermal paste as an example. So you got thermal paste there, you got thermal paste there. Now I had a lot more before, but I'm doing this as a demonstration. And by the way, that is plenty to, that's not great, but that's plenty. So I'm gonna put this back on. I just cleaned it off the top here. And I'm gonna take it back off. And unless it makes a liar out of me, what you're gonna see is hardly any on the top. Now again, I didn't goop it on and put this on. I just put a small amount, put it on here, and it was enough to make it spread. So I try to stay away from this because you always have somebody who knows, thinks they know better, and you know you're you're doing everything wrong. So forgive me if I'm explaining this wrong. It's very difficult when you put a camera on. All of a sudden, like you just can't can't think. Some people are better at, at it than others, and I'm not one of those people. But in a perfect world, you just need a thin layer of thermal paste. The idea of thermal paste is really just to be there to bridge the two pieces of metal together, so that the heat can transfer from one to the other, and this fills in all the gaps between them. If you need a large amount of thermal paste to make this work then something's not right and that's the case with this so i took this off and as you know with thermal paste you touch it i mean this stuff gets everywhere so if this was really making a great bit of contact with the cpu there would still be a lot more on there than just a little bit of residue out on the outside but let's look at this let me show you something else i found you may have noticed this already but uh there's kind of like a you see that in there so that makes me think that there is uh, a heat pipe actually embedded in this metal now if you look through it, I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but there, there's no heat pipe in there. So it's within this bottom piece. Now, I don't know if this is hollow. I haven't, I would have to desolder the top, the fins. I'm not doing that. So I don't know if this is hollow or, or what the deal is, but you know, a heat pipe is not bad. It, it transfers heat and allows us to use the entire heat sink and not just, you know, the center being super hot. The problem here is this needs to be lapped. I can actually feel that with my finger. This is a high spot and this is a low spot. And so only this little bit in the center is touching the CPU and some on the outside as we saw. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but I can in person. This is rounded. So it's actually curved. So you're really only getting the very center making direct contact with the CPU. The rest is just being filled in by the thermal paste and you gotta add a lot of it to make it work properly. So what this, so what needs to happen is this needs to be lapped. The concern I have is I don't know how thin this metal is. I mean, the fact that it, it's, it's like that, I don't know. That 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 kind of concerns me. So I don't know if I if I start sanding this, if it's going to rub through. So I'm going to try, and I may wind up ruining this heat sink in the process, but we'll find out. I got to go out to the store, pick up some uh, sandpaper, and we'll go from there. All right, so it's the next day. I went out and got some sandpaper. This is 180 grit. This is a little bit of the, too much, but it'll it'll be okay because I also got some 600, and this is uh, wet dry. So I'll uh, knock it down with this, and then smooth it over a little bit with this. Add a little bit of wet. Uh, uh, sorry, add a little bit of uh, water, and uh, I also have some polishing compound if needed. And really, you just want to go one direction while rotating the heat sink 
because you want to be able to get you know all over you want it to be even all over now what's interesting is you can see the center is actually the highest which is good or should be but there is a bit of a lip there and that's the part that we're trying to shave down <laughs> Well, it's starting to get into that bottom layer, so we'll keep going. But this is at least getting, I'm gonna keep going because this is at least flat and that's what I was going for. But I wanna go a little bit further and just see if I can kind of get into here. Also, contrary to popular belief, you don't need a polished mirror finish. You actually want a bit of grit. You, you, you want it to be not perfectly smooth um, because you want the thermal paste to actually be able to get in and get into the metal. Oh, we're so close, so close. All right, I think that's gonna be good enough. It's not perfect, it's not completely lapped down, but this is where the CPU is going to be. So I'm gonna switch over and use a bit of 600. And this is really just to knock it down and smooth it out a little bit. And all I'm doing here, this we're not going for a mirror finish, I just wanna knock it down so it's smooth. And it's doing that job. That's actually pretty good. It's a lot smoother than it was. Now, it's not mirror smooth and there are some gouges, some very light gouges. That's partially my fault. I bought cheap paper and piece of it came apart and just right down there. And that could have been even a piece of metal that flaked off. But regardless, it's okay, it's good enough. We're not going for a world championship here. I just wanted to knock it down enough to see if we can make it better. When, if you were to do this yourself, well, you can put a little bit more, more time into it. Um, it's really not needed though for something like this. Now something else, I'm not sure how I recorded, but before you put this on, you do wanna clean it thoroughly. You wanna get all that dust off of it. I don't know if you can see that, but see how dark it is? Now the compound I'm gonna use, again, I usually don't show this because everybody's, oh, you should use this brand, whatever, but this has worked for me. Protronics Series 7 Thermal Paste. Now I have Series 9 here. I don't really like this stuff. This is a little bit too thick. Um, but this stuff, uh, I'm at the very, very end of it. But this stuff is actually pretty good for the price. Uh, you can get this whole thing for like five bucks. And honestly, I've used all the expensive stuff in the past, I, I see no difference, so I use this. Now the way I'm gonna do this, and I'm like right at the end, so I don't even know if I have enough to, oh, there we go. I'm gonna put a big dab in the middle. That's probably a little too, that's too much, but. Okay, so I have it all put back together. Um, I have had it, I turned it on, and it's been it's running for about five minutes or so, and you can see already a, a huge improvement. Um, instead of idling at 50 degrees, it's idling around between 30 to 40. So th that's a huge improvement. Now, what I also wanna do is put washers on the bottoms of these springs, or at the bottom of the base of there, so that it'll, have, it'll actually increase the clamping force some down onto, um, onto the CPU and I believe that will help some. Uh, also this thermal compound, and by the way, I have to leave this on because that's the only thing that, when, once this is sealed, that's what causes it to pull air through the front. Uh, this thermal compound, I've noticed, once you heat cycle a few times, it actually squeezes out any extra compound that's in there that it doesn't need. It gets into the pores of the metal and it works fantastic. I haven't done that yet. I literally just put this on and you know plugged it in. But I don't, want to, I don't want to go ahead and do that yet. I want to put um, washers on there. I'm gonna do it one screw at a time. But if you notice, um, if you look, all these here, they're fairly even. Where before, the bottom one, for whatever reason, this core was always lower than these were. So it's much more even now. I'm gonna run 
CPU burn. And wow, it's at 100% and this thing is, the fan's not even spit ramping up. 60 degrees. You know, I think that's a win. It's sitting, all four cores are sitting at 100% and it's just slowly getting hotter and the fan's not even on yet. And when the fan gets going on these things, it, they're pretty loud. So, yep, I'd say that's a win. So if you have one of these and you are at, like I am having thermal problems or you want to put a better CPU in, check the heat sink. See if it's got the same, if it's the same type of heat sink and it has the same type of problem. Lapping it like that and just sanding it down, um, that could solve your problems like it just did here. I mean, I couldn't run it at 100% without it going to, you know, 90 degrees or more and then the fans would be screaming. So there you go. Thanks, and uh, if you're still with me, thank you. <laughs> I hope you found it interesting. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.